So a lot of Not Giving a Fuck, written by Mark Manson, has been written to help us question what it is we truly care about. You see, we only have a limited amount of time on this planet, and too many of us give far too much of our time worrying about things that really don't deserve the stress and attention. When I picked up this book, I was a little skeptical that this 30 something year old author would have some real key insights that I hadn't already read in one of the countless other self help books out there. But I admit I was fortunately mistaken. Mark's book offers us a number of condensed and thought provoking insights into how we can bring more meaning into our lives. Not just by not giving a fuck at all, but by saving the fucks we have for things that truly matter. In this video, I want to highlight some of the key insights I took from this book. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Key lesson number one, the pursuit of happiness is itself a negative experience. The conventional wisdom in the self-help world tells us that we should visualize the success we want to achieve in our lives. The problem with this, as Mark explains it, is that the actual act of thinking about the person you wish you were only reinforces that idea that you're not that person and leads you to fixate more and more on what you lack. The world today already loves to make us feel inadequate enough as it is through the likes of social media, movies and reality TV. It desperately wants you to give a fuck about the latest trends, and for good reason, because it's great for business. All advertising essentially boils down to, buy this and you'll be happy. Considering our history, we should all be extremely grateful for how easy we have it. We no longer have to worry about finding our next meal to survive, or working long hours in the hellhole conditions of the past. Instead, we have an unprecedented amount of freedom which is only likely to increase with more and more human tasks being replaced by machines and artificial intelligence. Now because we have so much more free time, there is now an infinite number of ways we could be spending our time, such as learning a new skill, travelling or working out. But this now means there is equally an infinite number of ways for us to feel inadequate in our abilities and lives. Mark states in his book, The desire for more positive experience is in itself a negative experience, and paradoxically, the acceptance of one's negative experience is itself a positive experience. This is one of my favourite quotes from the book and one that I think really provokes some deep thinking. Alan Watts referred to this as the backwards law, or the idea that the more you pursue positive emotion, the less satisfied you'll feel. The more you dream about having that perfect body, the more unattractive you'll start to see yourself. The more desperately you want to get rich, the poorer you'll start to feel with what you have. But the important thing to understand about this law is that as its name suggests, it works backwards. If you instead pursue the negative, you can actually generate the positive. Push yourself to work harder in the gym and you'll see better results. And it's the failures we make in business that improve our understanding the most and lead to success in the long run. Mark puts it like this, everything worthwhile in life is won through surmounting the associated negative experience. And to accumulate the required amount of negative experience, you have to accept that you will suffer and you will fail again and again. But understand that once you've become comfortable with the worst life can throw at you, you become invincible to it. Now all of this sounds pretty great, but how the hell do we actually go about doing it? This is where the subtle art comes in, and it requires practice. As they say, nothing worth doing in life is easy, and it won't happen overnight. Effectively, the art is having the ability to focus and prioritise your thoughts, to stop yourself when you sense you're about to give a fuck and question whether or not it really matters to you, which all comes down to your own personal values and beliefs. One key distinction Mark outlines in his book is that not giving a fuck does not mean being indifferent or having no interest or sympathy for anything. That's called being a psychopath or an asshole. What it does mean is being comfortable with being different for the sake of your own values, beliefs and goals. To truly not give a fuck is to stare down at life's most terrifying and difficult challenges and still take action. And to be able to not be phased by adversity like this, you first need to care about something more important, something that will get you out of bed every day and give your life purpose. So the critical question you need to ask yourself is, what are you choosing to give a fuck about? Finding that something is probably one of the most productive uses of your time. If you don't find it, you'll waste all of your time worrying about trivial issues like what your ex is up to or or how you need to get more batteries for the TV remote. Key lesson number two, happiness is a problem. Problems are constant throughout our lives and when you solve one, you usually just make a few more in the process. You buy a gym membership to improve your health and now you have to face the problem of actually getting yourself to the gym and planning your workout routines. 
The key is to understand that happiness comes from solving problems. It is the process of solving problems that brings us the most happiness. And in this way, happiness is more of an activity than just a passive feeling, or something that you discover whilst reading a book about it. When you avoid your problems, either by acting like you don't have any, or telling yourself you just can't solve them, you only make yourself miserable. Experiencing negative emotions is your body's way of telling you that there is a problem you haven't solved yet. They are a call to action and there is something that you need to do. Positive emotions can only come from proper actions to address the problem. Key lesson number three. We need to choose the struggle we enjoy in life. If I asked you what you wanted in life, you'd probably say something along the lines of, I just want to be happy in life. I want to have a job that I enjoy and a beautiful family. That is the obvious response, but it's meaningless. Everyone wants that. Mark recommends we ask ourselves a much deeper question. What pain do you want to sustain in your life? What are you willing to struggle for? Who you are is defined by what you are willing to struggle for. And answering this question honestly is going to give you a much greater indicator of how your life will turn out. You see, most people want the corner office. They want the boatloads of cash, but they don't want to suffer through 60 hour work weeks, long commutes, endless paperwork, and the corporate hierarchies required to get there. Most people want six pack abs, but how many people do you know that want to suffer through a strict regime of diet and exercise and actually enjoy that process? The problem here is we all love the destinations in our heads, but few of us actually enjoy the journey that is required to get there. You can't just love the result, you need to love the process. Key lesson number four, you are not special. Sometime around the 60s, the self-esteem movement started. Research at the time was suggesting that people who thought more highly of themselves caused fewer issues in society. And so from the 70s onwards, the principles were introduced into schools. Grade boundaries were lowered and participation trophies became a thing. This has led to an entire generation of self-entitled individuals who exude a delusional degree of self-confidence with nothing or little to back it up with. These people view every occurrence in their life as either an affirmation of or a threat to their own greatness, and so they constantly seek ways to feel good about themselves. This entitlement tends to play itself out in one of two ways. I'm great and everyone else sucks, or I suck and the rest of you are just so great. The problem with the self-esteem movement is that it measured self-esteem by how positively people felt about themselves, when the true measurement of self-worth is not how a person feels about their positive experiences, it's how they feel about and respond to their perceived negative qualities and experiences. Entitled people don't tend to go far because they're already convinced they know it all and can't accept any failure as their own. The people who truly succeed in life don't make it because they think they're exceptional to begin with. They're actually the ones that have accepted that they are far from perfect and so become obsessed with self-improvement. Mark calls this anti-entitlement and they become great because they don't think they are great already. Key lesson number five, the value of suffering and the importance of good values. I hate to say this, but suffering in our lives is inevitable. And if it is, then the question we should be asking ourselves is not how do I stop it, but why am I suffering? For what purpose? And this requires being self-aware. In his book, Mark describes self-awareness like an onion. The first layer is simply understanding and recognizing your own emotions when they arise. This makes me feel happy. This makes me feel sad. Great. The second layer is having the ability to ask why we feel them. Questioning this helps us to understand the cause, which we can actually do something about. And the third layer to all of this is our personal values. Why do I consider this to be a success or failure in the first place? To what standards am I judging and measuring myself and everyone else by? You see, it's our standards and belief that underlie everything we are and do. They determine what we believe to be a failure or success in the first place. And if they are poorly chosen, they will affect our entire lives. Most self-help advice is only concerned with addressing the first layer or two. Giving people ways to feel better in the short term without addressing the deeper issues. If you want to change how you see problems and deal with suffering, you have to figure out what your values are and make sure they are aligned with the problems that you enjoy solving. Mark breaks down how to define good and bad values like this. Good values. Good values are reality-based, 
socially constructive and are immediate and controllable. These include things such as honesty, responsibility, humility, curiosity, self-respect and charity. Bad values on the other hand are superstitious, socially destructive and they're not immediate and they're not controllable. These include things such as wanting to always be the centre of attention, never being alone, dominating others, and popularity. One of the key takeaways from all of this is that in a nutshell, the entire concept of self-improvement comes down to your ability to prioritise better values and choose better things to give a fuck about. So to summarise, you need to realise that constantly chasing us positive emotions is likely doing the opposite according to the backwards law. We need to instead ask ourselves and figure out what we truly care about and what struggle we want to sustain in our lives. Happiness is not a destination you'll just arrive at one day. It is the journey itself and it's in solving problems that we are the happiest. Negative emotions are simply our body's way of telling us that we have a problem to solve in our lives. We need to embrace that and align our values with solving them if we wish to have a more meaningful and fulfilling life. These are just some of the key takeaways from this book and I would highly recommend reading it to anyone, especially if you're unsure about what you're doing with your life and feel lost. It's a genuinely funny book. It's not too long and it's jam-packed with relevant stories that will better help you grasp the concepts I've discussed here. There's a big part of this book that I have not dealt with in this video and that's the values that Mark suggests are most beneficial to us. This I feel deserves its own video and so I wanted to save that for a future one. If you like this video and would like to see more, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks.